greetings to you. So today I want to talk about how inspiring your auric field is and how powerful it is when you give it the attention it deserves. And you can do amazing things at home, you can do amazing things with me in class, you can do amazing things in, uh, in learning how to tune in and go beyond. Because once you understand how important the auric field is and how important it is really to look after it and to navigate with it, the more you're going to feel aware of the centers of consciousness beyond that. And there are many, many more. We are only really just beginning. So we work through the inner centers, work through, play through, becoming aware of the centers that are pulsing through us, our illusion physical body, which is ultimately space and frequency. That is what quantum physics has already proven, thankfully. So we don't have to argue that anymore or try to suggest it through meditation. So what we're doing now is we are understanding that everything that happens in the body creates an electromagnetic field, has an electromagnetic field, has positive and negative ions or exchanges of energies. And so it creates a field, it has to, just like anything. It doesn't happen with nothing and it doesn't create nothing out of nothing, right? So the way your internal organs function, create your energy field. This is why certain psychics can see what's wrong with you in terms of your organs and they can energetically adjust that. How hydrated you are affects your entire body, which creates your electromagnetic field. And this is why all disease starts from your field. It, it is starting from the field of consciousness of what your self-care and connection with yourself is. And when that's not working well and that is repeatedly sustained, then it solidifies that incongruency into a physical experience. And the physical experience can be read in the aura by people who can see that or by, by tools that can detect a disturbed auric field or seeing how radiant it is and what the colors are actually expressing and meaning for you. Because the auric field will change according to your emotions, how you breathe, what you put on your body, how much you ground and earth yourself what you eat, what you listen to, the music you surround yourself with makes a huge impact. That's why certain sounds literally make us cringe and others make us literally open up and just want to dance like the mad video I did recently. That was an example of like the many options and tools that we have that we can really find a way to vibrate in joy. Creation is allowing us to be wherever we want to be. So we could suffer if we want and learn from that and explore that. But we could also choose to see everything from a higher perspective and look at this creation as a fun playground where we get the feedback through how we feel, how our aura feels. And depending on if we've looked after it or not in this particular context of this video right now, there is other contexts, but I'm focusing on the aura as a theme here. So how you breathe affects it. What kind of thinking you habitually engage in affects your field. Your posture affects your field because if you allow yourself to go with the flow of your actual design, which is a straight spine, which is shoulders rolled back, which is, you know, creating space here so that everything can function, the heart is open. Um, if we don't do that, it will over time affect us negatively because it's like we're blocking ourselves, we're restricting ourselves. We are not letting ourselves be open and free, which is the natural flow of nature. So do you eat as well as you can? Do you consider your level of hydration? Do you understand how, for example, essential oils can benefit your field versus artificial perfumes, which do the opposite, literally? This is all getting in touch with your vibrational dimension. So again, it helps a lot if we understand the other chakra dimensions first. If we are connected with our solid seeming physical body, if we actually feel gratitude for how amazing it is, for whatever it's able to do for us right now, and how amazing it used to be and how amazing it can be again, and really honoring it. Because remember the way you speak to you or the intention that you have or the projection that you have creates a sensation and is received and creates an outcome. If you look at all my other chakra videos, you will really, really get a good glimpse of that if you haven't already, or you may fine tune the depth of, 
of realizing it without intellectualizing it might just be an obvious truth to you so that's why kids respond to music that's why the aura changes when you go to an old people's home and you bring in puppy dogs and kids because they're smiling because their organs are being honored because the breathing changes from from being stressed to being relieved and happy it's so much honestly and that all affects your field which we perceive literally over the phone you can sense what someone's field and mood is like because we are so multi-sensory we are so beyond what we actually think of so i'm very much passionate about reminding people and encouraging people to realize the mind is useful the senses and all of that is great but we shouldn't rely on them there's so much more to us than that and so we can actually realize that when we open to the rest and we nurture that we look after it like we would when we wash our dishes or we brush our teeth or we cut the lawns or we make a beautiful garden or we set up our bedroom how we want it or we write in our journal the way we like it we spend that attention on ourselves and we become aware of the frequency at which we are vibrating so there is this whole level of consciousness that you can also look at there's been a lot written on that where actually um, shame and guilt are the lowest frequency you can have they literally will disable your body functions shame and guilt and then comes you know grief and fear and then you start to rise up to you know even neutrality and then you end up coming into a feeling of of love or forgiveness or joy and all of that choosing in terms of what you want to really dial into and engage in will affect your auric field which then in turn affects your so-called bodily functions and organs right it could so if you are in grief all the time we know that if we don't move beyond that um, we tend to have problems and we we have problems with the heart with our breath because you know that's the, the shadow side of the heart chakra so when we in grief that's fine but how do we move through it and learn from it and then let that unlock again and then of course the heart if it's blocked up through excessive grief that's not processed will affect your liver and your spleen and your pituitary and pineal and they affect it and that mood therefore creates you know again a chemical response and those chemical responses will either create a radiant aura or something that's contracted and um yeah it depends on what you wear for example wearing things that are synthetic really block your auric field they create static and you literally feel unconsciously or consciously you're in a, in a synthetic prison not getting your feet out into nature and out of your shoes is gonna block you from feeling electrostatically and you know stable going out in nature will always clear your aura having a shower will clear your aura to a greater or lesser degree uh, having those baths and putting in what will nurture your field and and really help you to release even consciously saying when you pull that plug that you are grateful for water and letting it take whatever no longer serves you so we don't want to just be unconscious and say well the shower is clearing it so some of us might just enjoy that and this is very true but we can go deeper now that we've journeyed through the consciousness of the chakras and realize the importance of the energy field we can even say thank you water thank you earth for receiving that thank you sun for transmuting that and thank you you know soul for noticing and giving permission for that to occur that's very different to uh, being on autopilot and and being there that's still effective but it's not optimal it's not how how deep you can really go with things so this is where our mind is useful where we are aware of how we want to navigate spiritually because without spiritual connection literally you're just like a program running around on and the program is programmed by others most likely um, and when you open up and, and acknowledge that you can start to expand and you can start to see you know way beyond what you can imagine so one of the things i use in classes are yes we use essential oils and i make up aura sprays or we use the essential oils directly because anyone who doesn't know i love to introduce them and all the oils will help you to have a high frequency all of them they're just profound high frequency pure plant then for example i was going to bring the, the bowl i've got uh, so many bowls i've got the gong i've got 
um, anything un anything imaginable literally uh, because I love sound and I know that people respond to that beyond talking so sound healing is so important so here we have the crystal lyre which for example um, from Canada is uh, tuned to 432 Hertz and the chakra centers and so Being aware of crystals and when you hold them because everything has an energy field everything has an aura now here I would add to it we don't know how this was harvested we don't know how it feels I don't know how you would feel if you were chopped up like this and potentially harvested by a child but beyond duality it is all part of the cosmic play beyond duality it is just an experience of energy in different forms rocks having energies you know every plant of course every animal every human literally your door your bed has a frequency to it your house the land and there's different consciousnesses and ley lines and water seas on the planet but also within your house and within your body so it's like the macrocosm and microcosm so again there's so so far we could go but we don't want to get lost in intellect right now i just wanted to give you some tips so how you breathe affects your field so anytime you're getting the heart rate going you're not only working your blood and detoxing and also your consciousness and having a new focus and you know getting the circulation going working your immune system but you're working your auric field so in kundalini yoga we have a lot of movements we have a lot of activities where we move the energy field deliberately and also because it is a meditative practice where we go more deeper into our breath work and capacity to project what we actually want rather than random programs we also use our capacity to project to see what we actually want to see how we want the auric field to be and play with that because like i always say the ultimate yogi really just sits and can direct the pranic life force through the consciousness and the strong focus of that wherever it is needed or wanted in the body and it becomes a beautiful playful discovery so yeah so i've given you a lot lot of tips and really in class again i will always be um how can you say it? i will be asking questions to find out for yourself where you are consciously with this like are you loving to be in touch with your energy are you open to trusting what you sense in other energy points and therefore being drawn to it and allowing that consciously or having you know an energy feel that you have contained a bit understanding this is not just a a radiance and an attractor but it's also something you can use to cocoon yourself for example like I've learned I can switch my chakras on and off and direct my field and um, you know that's how we send healing and all sorts of things and how we connect with everybody so allow yourself to delve into that because even now as you're sitting there whether you come to class or have a session or, or enjoy coming on a retreat with me we are going to dip into beautiful delicious depth and there's some coming up soon allow yourself to just sit in it right now and breathe deep visualize that you know your breathing is nice and smooth smooth breathing balances your chakra straight away where the inhale is deep and the exhale is deep and just imagine through your hand movements your imagination and allowing that you are clearing your field um, that it is radiant that you're expanding it that you are doing that to your capacity and again I coach this all the time in every class almost in every session because that's how we learn to be empowered that's how I go further than from pulling out what no longer serves from moving energy that is stuck that feels like it's not bright and you have all those skills we're doing it all the time and when we're not doing it we tend to feel stuck and we know it and then you probably feel like you need to go outdoors have a run or do something else your intuition does always guide you I'm happy to share so many tools like literally there is what I would say infinite tools and to support you in your journey and to also go beyond the auric field into the causal body the mental body the pranic body the astral bodies there are so many that you can connect with and it is an incredible journey and it shifts your life profoundly puts on completely new lenses of perception that are very empowering and divine i must finish see you soon have fun ciao